السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو لیکچر نائنٹین آف ڈیٹا مائننگ سو ٹوڈے وی ول کنٹینیو ود آر ڈسکشن آن کلسٹرنگ ایلگودمس وین وی اسٹاپ لاسٹ ٹائم یو آر ڈسکسنگ آئرکل کلسٹرنگ ایلگودم ایلگودمس and in particular we have started discussing the birch clustering algorithm which actually is a hybrid uh, hierarchical clustering algorithm it's primarily a hierarchical clustering algorithm but it can also be combined with a partitional clustering algorithm like k means after we have uh, developed the hierarchy of clusters so uh, we will start from there and then we will move on to density based clustering and if we have time Uh, we will be starting graph based clustering as well so clustering this chapter of clustering is relatively big uh, we have a number of algorithms that we need to discuss uh, we have already talked about partitional clustering algorithms the k means k medoids in particular we also briefly discussed the k modes uh, we then discussed the hierarchical clustering framework the agglomerative clustering algorithm Uh, we also briefly talked about bisecting k means which is a hierarchical uh, version of the k means as such it is hybrid and then we are not talking about birch after that we'll talk about uh, density based clustering algorithm we'll discuss one of that the db scan and then we'll discuss some ideas from graph based clustering and discussed uh, one algorithm in bit more detail and after discussing these algorithms we'll be discussing the evaluation of clustering algorithms uh so so we still have i think a couple of more lectures to uh two to three more lectures in clustering so after clustering we will be discussing outlier detection and then we will be discussing some additional uh topics uh, till the end of this semester so that is basically the agenda for today Are there any questions? so we were discussing birch so this basically this stands for balanced iterative recursive clustering with hierarchies so birch is uh, some characteristics of birch so this is as i said a hybrid algorithm so it is hierarchical as well as partitional so that's one characteristics uh, the other characteristics is it is applicable to online data streams or it is an incremental clustering algorithm so it can be applied to uh, data sets that are not available all at once so it can be applied to data streams so so that's i think a big advantage uh, often times in many real world applications we don't have all the data all at once so you can think of uh, sensor data like temperature pressure and so on uh, and other sensor information so clustering that would require uh, that we process data at we receive it so birch would be a good example or good algorithm to apply there one other characteristic of this algorithm is only it is only applicable to numeric data so uh, the reason for this would become evident shortly uh, because we need to compute the mean and other aspects of each cluster so mean is only computable for data sets that are numeric in nature so each cluster in a birch algorithm is described by a clustering feature vector cf vector 
So we mentioned this last time. Uh, so this consists of three things, n, the number of objects in the cluster, ls, the linear sum of objects and their values in the cluster and the squared sum of the objects and their values in each cluster. So, so let's say if you have two clusters, you have CF1, this is one, and you have another CF2. So both these clusters are described by two CFs. So if these two clusters are merged, so merging CF1 and CF2 would give CF3, which is simply CF1 plus CF2. Okay. So if I want to write it in terms of numbers, so if you have CF1, let's say this is N1, LS1, or SS1. Okay. Well, let's say CF2, aapke paas hai, N2, C, LS2, and SS2. Then CF3, which is the merger of these two clusters, would simply be N1 plus N2. LS1, remember LS1 is a vector. So LS2, so we add the two vectors element by element. And then similarly, SS1 is a vector plus SS2. So we don't need to uh, recompute from scratch. We can simply uh, compute from the CFs of the clusters within a bigger cluster. So that is one. Uh, good way of, uh, one way of, uh, so basically the CF is a summary of the cluster. And from this summary, you can derive various stats. For example, the mean or the centroidal position. So mean of a cluster, it's simply LS divided by N. Okay. And given the mean, you can always compute distances of a new object using including distance, Manhattan distance, whatever your uh, similarity measure that you're using. Okay. Uh, all right. So that is about CF. Uh, so the algorithm itself creates a tree. And that tree is called a CF tree, clustering feature tree. And this tree is actually a balance tree uh, for so if you recall in your data structures or algorithms course you must have studied trees whose leaves are always balanced whose leaf nodes are always balanced or at the same level uh, so b tree for example so essentially this tree that is created uh, by the birch algorithm is also a balance tree and if you recall, a balance tree always starts from the leaf node and then it grows upward. So that leaf nodes ke sare nodes ek hi level per rain. So that's how it maintains its balance. Okay. And of course, these nodes represent uh, clusters. So let's look at an example of the process and I think you will get a better idea. So there are actually two parameters that this algorithm uses. <clears throat> One parameter is called the branching factor. We can call it B. And the other parameter is uh, <clears throat> the diameter threshold for clusters, which we can call D. So in other words, we don't want our clusters to be bigger than D where D is a user-specified threshold for the diameter. And we don't want each node in the tree to have more than two, more than B, uh, so branching factor is actually the branches. So uh, in general, so if, so B is a branching factor, this basically means that number, so, max number of clusters per node is basically b minus one okay 
So let me show you the node. So each node in a CF tree, you can represent it by a rectangle. Okay. So this node. Hai. So let's say this node is only one CF. Hai. I'm writing it inside it. So, uh, so this CF basically is one cluster. So its branching factor two will be two. So you, this can have two branches. So after each cluster and before the CF and after a cluster, there's a branch downstairs. Uh, and in that branch, you can have another node below it. Okay. So when I say branching factor, let's say is two, this means that every node can maximum two child. Ho sakte, maximum two child. Ho sakte. So which means that every node can maximum one cluster, one CF. Ho sakte. Okay. So this parameter B thus controls the size of each node, which means the size of each cluster. And it also controls the depth of the tree because when B is small, the tree is more big. Okay. Of course, not, this factor is not the only one that controls this. D also controls it, the diameter threshold. But here I'm mentioning uh, uh, B only. So branching factor is the maximum number of childs that a tree, a node can have. And as I said, if B is five, a node can have five childs, which means that it can have a maximum of four clusters. So five ka kya hoga? Let's say a node has come as CF slikra. Ek CF one hoga, ek CF two hoga, ek CF three hoga. एक सीएफ फोर होगा और ये आपके पास बीच में सारे ब्रांचेस होंगे फाइव ब्रांचेस होंगे एक स्टार्ट में एंड देन बीच में सो टोटल ब्रांचेस फाइव हो जाएंगे मैक्सिमम क्लस्टर्स फोर होंगे सो दिस बी एक्चुअली स्पेसिफाइज द लिमिट ऑफ इट तो मे बी एट स्टार्ट ए नोड मे हैव जस्ट वन सीएफ और लेट्स से बी उसका फाइव है तो इसका मतलब इसके अंदर और सीएफ बाद में आ सकते हैं जब ये फोर सीएफ इसके अंदर आ जाएंगे Fifth is can say is can there nahi aega, we need to create a new node. Okay. So that's about B. So how do you create a new node that is controlled or that is decided by the diameter? So diameter jab kisi CF ka threshold se zada ho jata hai, iska matlab hai ke wo nea object us can there nahi aega. You will have to create a new cluster with that object. अब लेट्स से उस नोड में जगह होगी तो वो तो आ जाएगा जैसे लेट्स से जब मैंने ये आखिरी जो ड्राइंग ड्रॉ की है उसमें एक सीएफ सिर्फ डाला है लेट्स से मेरे पास एक नया ऑब्जेक्ट आता है वो इसमें नहीं आ सकता सीएफ 1 में बिकॉज़ इसका डायमीटर बढ़ जाता है वो डालने से तो देयर आई विल क्रिएट अ न्यू सीएफ व्हिच इज सीएफ 2 और वो उसमें आ जाएगा बट लेट्स से इसमें पहले ही चार होते तो मैं डालने के बाद पांचवा डालना चाह रहा हूं तो पांचवा तो अलाउड नहीं है देयर आई हैव टू स्प्लिट दिस नोड इनटू टू so basically, this is the process. Chalta hai. You split and you create new nodes at the root, at, at the top. At the leaf, you always, you're always balanced. So I think you should recall your uh, data structures, balance tree or B tree, kis tarah banta hai wahan. Toh wohi cheez, process wohi hai iska. So let me write down the process and I'll go to an example. Or example, फिर आपके पास uploaded भी आप अपने time पे भी बाद में देख सकेंगे, ठीक है? So I have defined the two parameters. So, so let me just take a simple example here to define the process as well. So let's say आपके पास कुछ data stream, one D data stream है. So let's say आपके पास object nine आया, one D. This is the first object that you have seen. So you don't have anything. You create the first node. So you have node one, ठीक है? पहला node आपने create कर दिया, उसमें पहला CF आ गया, CF one node one के अंदर। इसमें क्या होगा? Simply one object है, LS इसका nine है। आह number छोटे कर लेते हैं, calculation मुश्किल हो जाएगी। 
डेट से ये टू है तो ये टू हो गया और इसका स्क्वायर फोर हो गया ठीक है सो वन डी है तो वन वन वैल्यूज हैं इन एल एस एंड इन एस एस ठीक है सो ना लेट्स से मेरे पास सेकंड कोई ऑब्जेक्ट आया फाइव आया लेट्स से सो फाइव आया आई फर्स्ट चेक के किस किस लीफ नोड आई हैव जस्ट वन नोड नाउ I need to go to the leaf node from the root. Of course, यहाँ पर सिर्फ tree एक ही है, एक ही node है. तो हमने देखना है कि इसके अंदर भी एक ही CF है. मैंने देखना है कि ये five किसके करीब है. And करीब के लिए वही centroidal distance, mean distance देखेंगे. Since there is just one option, तो हम उसी के अंदर डालेंगे. Node one, उसी के अंदर डालेंगे. CF one के अंदर हम ये add कर देंगे. So we have two points. पहले आपके पास two था, तो ये seven हो गया. पहले था four, four plus five times five twenty five. तो ये हो 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 गया, गया। ठीक है? है? नया CF बट आफ्टर क्लस्टर, क्लस्टर कहां करनी जहां सबसे है, जिस क्लस्टर के साथ के सबसे क्लोजेस्ट है लेट से यहाँ तो एक ही था तो हमारे पास चॉइस एक ही थी बट इफ दे वर मल्टीपल ऑप्शन यू हैव टू इंसर्ट इट इन टू द क्लस्टर विच इज टू विच इज इज द क्लोजेस्ट अब इसका मैंने डायमीटर निकालना है ठीक है डायमीटर यू कैन कंप्यूट फ्रॉम दीज वैल्यूज तो उसका जो फॉर्मूला मैं लिखता हूँ डायमीटर का फॉर्मूला डी एस क्यू आर टी ठीक है सो टू इंटू एन विच इज ऑफ कोर्स योर नंबर ऑफ क्लस्ट पॉइंट इन द क्लस्टर एस एस का सम ऑफ द वेक्टर माइनस टू इंटू एल एस तो एल एस इज अ वेक्टर रिमेंबर सो वेक्टर वेक्टर डॉट प्रोडक्ट कर रहे हैं सो आई ट्रांसपोज दिस मल्टीप्लाइड विद एल एस अगेन ठीक है डिवाइडेड बाय ऑफ कोर्स एन इन टू एन माइनस वन सो दिस इज द फॉर्मूला फॉर द डायमीटर अब ऊपर जो मैंने लिखा है उसका मैं निकालता हूं डायमीटर क्या निकलेगा सो वी हैव टू इन टू टू इन टू एस एस का सम क्या है ट्वेंटी नाइन है ठीक है माइनस टू इन टू एल एस मेरे पास सिंपली क्या था एल एस सेवन था शायद सो सेवन इंटू सेवन ये सिंगल डिजिट है सॉरी स्केलर है तो सेवन टाइम सेवन हो गया तो डिवाइडेड बाय टू पॉइंट है तो टू इंटू वन डिवाइड बाई टू स्क्वेर रूट की लेना था इसका नाइन का स्क्वेर रूट भी है एस क्यू आर टी so this is 3 theek hai so the diameter is 3 so let's say if our threshold was 4 for example to ye hamara node isi tarah hi update hota cf hamara 2 7 or 29 wala hota but let's say diameter 2 hota mera threshold 2 hota to iska matlab hai ki isko dalne se mera diameter 3 ho gaya which is not allowed so what would then happen is ke ye node 1 mein मेरे पास दो सी हो जाएंगे एक सी एफ वन जो ओरिजिनल था उसमें वन था टू था और फोर था और एक नया सी एफ टू आ जाएगा इसके अंदर जिसमें सिर्फ ये एक पॉइंट आ जाएगा वन प्लस वन कामा फाइव और ट्वेंटी फाइव तो अब इस इस नोड में दो सी एफ आ गए ठीक है सो इफ माय ब्रांचिंग फैक्टर वॉज लेट से टू तो दो सी तो अलाउड नहीं है राइट right? तो इसका मतलब है कि ये इस नोड के अंदर नहीं आ सकता सो आई विल हैव टू ब्रेक दिस नोड सो नोड वन मेरे पास एक होगा सो so, अब ब्रेक करने का भी तरीका क्या होता है वी नीड टू फाइंड द टू क्लस्टर दैट आर फर्दस्ट अवे तो वही हम मीन डिस्टेंस से देखेंगे मीन निकाल सकते हैं क्लस्टर्स के 
وہ جو دو کلسٹر جو فائر ہو گئے ہیں وہ دو نوڈز میں ڈال لیتے ہیں اس میں تقریر دو ہی ہیں تو ہم علیدہ علیدہ کر دیں گے سو وی ہیو سی ایف ون اس میں ایک آ جائے گا ون ٹو اور فور اور دین وی ہیو این نوڈ ٹو ناؤ اس میں ایک اور سی ایف ون آ گیا اس میں ون فائیو اور ٹوئنٹی فائیو اب یہ دو نوڈز بن گئے اب جب آپ کے پاس دو نوڈز بن گئے آپ کا اس کو ایک پیرنٹ بنانا پڑے گا سو ریمبر اے بی ٹری آلویز گروز فرام باٹم اپ اب پیرنٹ اس کا بنائیں گے تو دس ایٹ دس لیول آپ کے پاس دو کلسٹرز ہیں ایک پیرنٹ میں آپ کا جو کلسٹرز بنے گا ان دونوں کا مرج کا ہوگا وہ مرج کرنا آپ کو آتا ہے سمپلی دونوں سی ایف کا سم کر لیں اوپر لے جائیں تو اس کا جو پیرنٹ نوڈ ہوگا پیرنٹ نوڈ ہوگا اٹ ول جسٹ ہیو ون سی ایف اٹ ول بی دا سم ادر ٹو وہ جو اوپر پہلے ویلی نکالی تھی ٹو اور کیا تھا سیون اور ٹوینٹی نائن اس کی لیفٹ سائڈ پہ نوڈ ون آئے گا اس کے رائٹ سائڈ پہ نوڈ ٹو آئے گا ٹھیک ہے سو سو پروسیس کیا ہے بیسیکلی لیف نوڈ میں ہمیشہ انٹریز ہوں گی لیف نوڈ میں پہلے ایک نوڈ تھا بعد میں دو ہو گئے جب دو ہو گئے تو دونوں کا اوپر ایک اور سی ایف بن گیا لیفٹ سے اس میں ایک اور تیسرا آ گیا تو آپ کو آپ کو دیکھنا پڑے گا آپ کے یہاں آپ نے کس طرح اس کو مینیج کرنا ہے تو یو ول ہیو ٹو اسائن اب ان کے جو اس جو تیسرا جو اس کا آیا یو ول ہیو ٹو ہیو اے پیرنٹ فار دس اب اوپر اس کی جگہ کوئی نہیں اس کا یہ بریک ہوگا اوپر والا اوپر والے دو ہو جائیں گے دو ادھر آ گئے ایک ادھر آ گیا اور اس کا پھر ایک اور اوپر بن گیا سو اس طرح کر کے نا یہ ٹری رائز ہوتا ہے سو اف یو وانٹ ٹو گیٹ اے بیٹر آئیڈیا لک ایٹ سم ایگزامپلس آئی اپلوڈیڈ سم ایگزامپل ایک ایگزامپل اس ایکس ایکسل اس ورڈ فائل میں ایک اور ورڈ فائل بھی ہے اس میں بھی دیا ہوا ہے اس میں آف کورس ڈائی میٹر کسی اور طریقے سے نکالا ہے بٹ جو اسٹینڈرڈ طریقہ وہی جو میں نے ابھی لکھا ہے ایس کیو آر ٹی کے اسکوئر روٹ آف ٹو این ایس ایس مائنس ٹو ایل ایس سو آن تو اس طرح نکلے گا تو یہ ٹو ڈی پرابلم ہے تو یو شوڈ فالو دس ٹو ڈی پرابلم یو گیٹ این آئیڈیا ہاؤ دس ٹری از کریٹیڈ ٹھیک ہے ون ادر تھنگ یہ میں نے اوپر کمپٹیشن کیا تھا فار فار ون ڈی ڈیٹا سیٹ سو لیٹ می کریٹ اے ٹو ڈی ڈیٹا سیٹ جسٹ ٹو شو یو ہاؤ دس کمپٹیشن از کمپیوٹیڈ سو لیٹ سے ٹو کاما ٹو ایک ایک ٹو ڈی آبجیکٹ ہے لیٹ سے ٹو کاما ون ایک اور آبجیکٹ ہے اور میرے پاس ون کاما ٹو ایک اور آبجیکٹ ہے سو لیٹ سے ہمارے پاس تھری آبجیکٹ ہیں ایک کلسٹر میں تو اس کا سی ایف کیا ہوگا تھری ہو گیا ادھر ٹھیک ہے سو لینئر سم کیا ہوگا ٹو پلس ون ٹو پلس ٹو پلس ون فائیو اور دوسرا ہے ٹو پلس ٹو ایک سیکنڈ وہ تو وہی ہوگا ٹو پلس ون وہ بھی فائیو ہوگا ٹھیک ہے فائیو اور اسکوائر سم کیا ہوگا یو ہیو ٹو اسکوائر ایچ ویلیو سو ٹو اسکوائر فور ہو گیا ون اسکوائر ون ہے اور ٹو اسکوائر فور ہو گیا دس از فور فور ایٹ پلس ون نائن ٹھیک ہے اینڈ دین ون اسکوائر سوری ٹو اسکوائر فور ون اسکوائر ون پھر ٹو اسکوائر فور فور ٹائم ایٹ یہ بھی نائن ٹھیک ہے سو یہ ہے اس کا اس کا یہ ایل ایس آپ کا ایس ایس بن گیا اب اس کا ڈائی میٹر کس طرح نکلے گا سو ڈائی میٹر میں ایس کیو آر ٹی ہے اس کے اندر ساری بیچ میں ٹرم ہے تو سو پہلے بیچ والی ٹرم نکال لیتے ہیں ٹھیک ہے بیچ والی ٹرمس کیا ہیں سو ٹو انٹو این ایس تھری ٹھیک ہے انٹو ایس ایس تھا ایس ایس از اس طرح میں نے اس لیے لکھا ہے کہ اس کے ایس ایس کا جو ویکٹرز ہیں اس کے ایلیمنٹس کا سم ہے ٹھیک ہے سو دس وڈ بی ٹو انٹو تھری انٹو نائن پلس نائن ایٹین ٹھیک یہ ون ایٹ بنے گا 
नाइन प्लस नाइन एस एस जो वेक्टर है उसमें सारे एलिमेंट्स का सम है तो ये नोटेशन उसका मतलब वो है जो बार्स वाली नोटेशन यूज की गई ठीक है और दूसरी तरफ मेरे पास था सेकंड टर्म थी टू इंटू एल एस ट्रांसपोज इंटू एल एस एल एस ट्रांसपोज इंटू एल एस का मतलब ये डॉट प्रोडक्ट है ठीक है अब डॉट प्रोडक्ट किसका है फाइव फाइव का है तो फाइव टाइम्स फाइव ट्वेंटी फाइव प्लस फाइव टाइम्स फाइव ट्वेंटी फाइव ये फिफ्टी हो जाएगा सो दिस वुड बी टू इन टू फाइव टाइम्स फाइव ट्वेंटी फाइव प्लस फाइव टाइम्स फाइव फिफ्टी दिस इज हंड्रेड राइट सो हमारे पास ओवरऑल पे क्या फॉर्मूला बना एस क्यू आर टी वन जीरो एट माइनस हंड्रेड So divided by three and two, which is six, right? So one point one five is the uh, dia of this cluster, which contains three objects. Each of those three objects are in two D. Okay. Uh, any question on this? So let me just draw one more figure here, and then we we'll move on to the next model. I hope the figure is good. एक ये है इधर चल पड़ा. So let's say इस तरह का आपका CF tree है. So whenever you get a new object, you start from the root node. Root node में आपने देखना किस CF के सबसे करीब है. So जिस CF के सबसे करीब है uh you follow so basically you follow the branch of that cf to the leaf node ya yeah, to the child node us child node pe dekhen kis cf mein sabse kareeb hai then if there is some other node child of that until you reach the leaf node leaf node mein pe dekhna kis cf ke sath sabse kareeb usme aap dal denge so entry would always occur in the leaf node और उसके बाद फिर सारी प्रोसेसिंग शुरू होगी लीफ नोड में आप देखेंगे जगह उसमें थी डायमीटर उसका एक्सीड नहीं हो रहा तो दैट इज फाइन एंड गुड यू जस्ट अपडेट द सी एफ बट से उसका डायमीटर एक्सीड हो रहा है तो नया सी एफ बनेगा और नया सी एफ की उस नोड के अंदर जगह थी तो अगेन देर इज इन मेजर चेंज सिर्फ सी एफ अपडेट कर दे देट से उस नोड में सी की जगह नहीं थी तो वो फिर नोड स्प्लिट होगा तो एक और नोड आ जाएगा तो नोड जब आ जाएगा तो फिर ऊपर नोड्स भी चेंज होंगे तो मतलब ये इसका एक बी ट्री टाइप का प्रोसेस है फॉर बिल्डिंग द ट्री सो एट एनी लेवल यू गेट द नंबर ऑफ क्लस्टर सो यू कैन फाइंड द क्लस्टर्स एट एनी लेवल सो आपका लीफ लेवल में सबसे ज्यादा क्लस्टर्स होंगे फिर ऊपर वाले लेवल में थोड़े से कम होंगे फिर उसके बाद कम होंगे रूट में होपफुली जस्ट वन नोड होगा जिसमें कुछ क्लस्टर्स होंगे आप कोई भी लेवल ले सकते हैं एंड वर्क विद दैट so it is hybrid in the sense that ke once you have built this tree this is a cf tree aap koi bhi level le le us level ke jo clusters already bane hue hain uske upar partitional algorithm phir chala de uh like the k means algorithm and do the reclustering so remember a hierarchical clustering algorithm does not do iterative relocation theek hai isme ek कोई बैड डिसीजन हो गया कोई बैड मर्ज हो गया तो वो मर्ज हमेशा रहेगा इसलिए बाद में एक ग्लोबल क्लस्टरिंग एल्गोरिथम चलाना इज ऑलवेज बेनिफिशियल 
So take any level and apply a K-means algorithm and you'll get the final clustering. So originally this algorithm BERT was proposed for uh, online, as I said, uh, clustering firstly. And secondly, it was this whole process of the tree was designed such that you can fit this tree into memory. So, but yeah, that is no longer a big issue nowadays. So memory ab itni issue nahi hoti, uh, it's not a big problem. So, but still the structure is, uh, as I said, beneficial for understanding the cluster that you have in the data set. This algorithm is beneficial for clustering data streams. And uh, so, so these are some of the positives for the algorithm. One of the negatives uh, for this algorithm is that it is order dependent. Meaning that if your data set arrives in a different order, then you may get a different clustering and a different CF tree. Okay. So let's say maybe I have data set 1D, 3, 5, 9, 1, 15. So if I cluster them in this order from left to right, I might get a different clustering as compared to if I cluster this, if I insert this object from right to left. Okay. So clustering is different. So this is also another reason why we would like to apply a partitional algorithm after we have done a clustering at a particular level. So partitional algorithm is the issues that will resolve karke global clustering. Kar de gaya. Sure. Any questions? <clears throat> All right. So we have talked about a clustering algorithm that were partitional. We have talked about clustering algorithms that were hierarchical in nature. I also mentioned that, that these are the two main categories of clustering algorithms, but there are other categories as well. So let's discuss a uh, two more such categories. There are many more actually. So we will discuss density based clustering. By the way, uh, we can categorize clusters as well. So clusters can be categorized as prototype based, density based, graph based, and so on. Uh, so far, all the algorithms that we have discussed were prototype based clusters. Clusters that were defined by a single object or maybe a few objects. So now this is the first time that we are now to we are going to discuss clusters that are described by the notion of density. So density based clustering. So in general, what is density? So density is basically for data points, number of objects divided by volume occupied by them. Density. If it is 2D, uh, you basically compute the number of objects in that 2D square or rectangle or whatever that area is, then calculate divided by the area of that 2D region. So that would give you a notion of density. So from this formula, of course, you also understand that the density would increase if you have more objects in the same space. That's one thing. So density would also increase if you have the same object, but the space is reduced. The same objects lie in a smaller space. So again, density would be high. So in density-based clustering, the goal is to find uh, 
regions of with high density theek okay? hai so all those regions with the density that that goes beyond some threshold would then be a cluster theek okay? hai so all regions with density greater than some threshold is thus then a cluster theek okay? hai all right so now let's uh, formally define some parameters and uh, di discuss one particular algorithm for density based clustering which we call the db scan algorithm theek okay? hai so db scan so density based uh, of course <laughs> iska bhi acronym ka koi matlab hai density based uh, scan um, वैसे तो डीबी स्कैन ही कहते हैं बट इट स्टैंड फॉर एस सी एंड दस स्टैंड फॉर समथिंग आई थिंक एंड इज फॉर नॉइज एंड सो ऑन सो सो अर्ली डेटा माइनिंग एलगुदम यूजली हैड इज लॉन्ग एक्रोनिम्स बट इट्स नॉट दैट इम्पॉर्टेंट टू रिमेंबर वट दैट एक्रोनिम स्टैंड फॉर सो बेसिकली पॉपुलर नोन एज डी बी स्कैन राइट so this algorithm in particular uses two parameters uh parameters ke i think notation we use kar lete hain jo book mein hai epsilon and Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Remember this? I think we're any of that number of points. So these are the two parameters that define the density. What is epsilon? Radius. Okay. So radius of uh, a region starting from the center. Okay. And n is the number of points or objects in region. so since we are working with radius that is centered around this around a central location so this region would definitely be spherical in nature so 2d mein ye circle type ka hoga 3d mein a uh, a ball type ka hoga and in general a hypersphere hypersphere theek hai theek hai so okay so these are two parameters that are used in addition there are some other definitions uh so so there are definitions of points let me write those points or objects we call we have a core point or core object we have a border object or border point and then we have a outlier or outlier point so all the objects in your data set can would would lie in one of these would be of one of these three types they would either be a core point or a border point or a uh or a uh, outlier theek okay? hai so let's look at these one by one so what is a core point so a point p is a core point if greater than n of course ye greater or equal you have to decide jo bhi use karna wo have to follow it consistently greater than equal bhi ho sakta hai greater bhi ho sakta hai greater than n points lie 
in its epsilon neighborhood theek hai so do you get get this idea so core point is a point p uska ek radius hai epsilon so let's say ye mera ek core point p hai aur iska ek epsilon radius hai ab let's say isme of course ek p can p bhi andar hai so ye bhi aapne decide karna hai ki p ko count karna hai ki nahi karna so whatever you want to follow you should follow it consistently so let's say mai p ko count kar raha hu theek hai aur let's say mera threshold n ka let's say 3 hai theek hai so if i have a uh, ye cluster mein ab sahi hai phir se draw mai phir se draw kar raha hu p idhar hai cluster hai okay i'm going to write again here so if you have more than four more than three points in this epsilon neighborhood of p so and then this p would be a core point so if you have another object right side pe main draw kar raha hu ek p hai iske neighborhood mein sirf ek aur object hai then this p would not be a core point theek hai so ek koi object p uska neighborhood banega through epsilon uske andar teen point ya usse zyada hain including p then it is p is called a core point otherwise it would not be a core point so in other words core point is a point that lies in the center of a dense region remember epsilon or n se density hum define kar rahe hain ठीक है, so that's a core point. So if a object is not a core point, then it could either be a border point or it could be an outlier. So what is a border point first? So obviously P is a border point. If it is not a core point, of course, ये तो पहले हमने बात कर ली, ठीक है, and it lies in the neighbor of a core point of some other core point theek okay? hai so so let's say ye p a core point hai ye p draw kar raha hu ye p hai ये इसका नेबरहुड है अब ये इसमें Q कोई है तो ये जो Q है ये इट सेल्फ कोर पॉइंट नहीं है बट इट लाइज इन द नेबरहुड ऑफ द कोर पॉइंट P। सो इफ इन दैट केस Q वुड बी ए बॉर्डर पॉइंट बट लेट्स से Q भी कोर पॉइंट होता तो ये पूरा कोर पॉइंट का रीजन चलता रहता ठीक है सो so, Q ये कोई ग्रुप है इसके अंदर एक क्यू है विच इज नॉट द सेंटर ऑफ दिस रीजन एंड इट्स नाइदर ए सेंटर ऑफ इट्स ओन रीजन देन दिस वुड बी ए बॉर्डर पॉइंट सो इफ ए पॉइंट इज नाइदर ए कोर पॉइंट एंड नॉट और ए बॉर्डर पॉइंट देन इट इज एन आउटलायर इसका मतलब है कि ये पॉइंट कोई इधर होगा दिस वुड बी एन आउटलायर बिकॉज इसके इर्द गिर्द भी उतने पॉइंट नहीं है और ये किसी डेंस रीजन के अंदर भी नहीं है दिस वुड बी एन आउटलायर so each point in a data set would be either would would be one of these three types border point core point and a uh, outlier so then we have outlier p is an outlier if it is neither a core nor a border point theek hai
تھوڑی سی ایک دو کچھ اور ڈیفینیشن بھی ایٹ لیسٹ دیٹ از یوز ان ڈینسٹی بیسڈ کلسٹرنگ بیکاز دیٹ وڈ دین لیڈ ٹو آور ڈیفینیشن آف اے کلسٹر یہ آپ کے پاس ایک پی کور پوائنٹ ہے ٹھیک ہے اس کا مطلب اس کا ایک ریجن ہے ایک اور یہاں پوائنٹ ہے یہ بھی ایک کور پوائنٹ ہے اس کا بھی ایک ریجن ہے ایک اور پوائنٹ ہے یہ بھی کور پوائنٹ ہے ایک اور ریجن سو یو آر گیٹنگ ایک کنیکٹڈ ریجن آف کور پوائنٹس تو یہ جو کنیکٹڈ ریجن ہے آف کور پوائنٹس از دین اے کلسٹر ٹھیک ہے بٹ ایکچولی اس کے بورڈ جو پریسائز ڈیفینیشن یہ ہے کہ وی ہیو دا نوشن آف ڈینسٹی ریچیبل اینڈ ڈائریکٹلی ڈینسٹی ریچیبل ٹھیک ہے سو Okay, so let me write the definitions first. So what are those two definitions? Directly, density, reachable. It's called DDR. So Q is DDR from P if there exists a Uh, a path of core points that connect P to Q. Okay? So let me explain it. So we are starting from P. P core point. Okay? So P ke neighborhood ke under hi ek koi P1 hai, ye bhi core point hai. Okay? اب پی ون کے نیبر کے اندر ایک اور پوائنٹ ہے پی ٹو یہ بھی کور پوائنٹ ہے پی تھری یہ بھی کور پوائنٹ ہے اینڈ وی کنٹینیو دس فیشن اینڈ پی این یہ بھی کور پوائنٹ ہے اور اس کور پوائنٹ کے بعد پھر آپ کا کیو آ رہا ہے ٹھیک ہے سو دین وی سی دیٹ کیو از ڈائریکٹلی ڈینسٹی ریچیبل فرام پی بیکاز دیر از اے پاتھ آف کور پوائنٹس دیٹ لیڈ ٹو کیو اور کور پوائنٹ کیا چیز ہے دیز آر دا سینٹرز آف ڈینس ریجن اینڈ ایس سچ یہ جو ڈینس ریجن بنے گا یہ کلسٹر ہوگا کنیکٹڈ پوائنٹ ہوگا آل ڈینس ریجن فارم اے کلسٹر ٹھیک ہے تو دس از دا مین تھنگ اور اس کا جو دوسری ڈیفینیشن ہے وہ ڈینسٹی ریچیبل ہے سمپلی ڈینسٹی ریچیبل نو ڈائریکٹ ڈی آر اس میں بیسکلی یہ ہم کہتے ہیں کہ پی از ڈینسٹی ریچیبل فرام کیو اور الٹا بھی کر سکتے ہیں وٹ ایور ایف اس کی ایک جو سمپل ڈیفینیشن تو وہ یہ ایف دے لائی ان دا سیم کنیکٹڈ ریجن کنیکٹڈ ڈینس ریجن ٹھیک ہے مطلب جو اوپر میں نے پاتھ بنایا ہے سو لیٹ سے اوپر والا میں نے پاتھ پی ون پی پی ون پی ٹو اور پھر لیٹ سے ڈیش 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 کو میرے پاس کیو آ گیا ٹھیک ہے لیٹ سے آئی ہیو اندر پی پی ون پی ٹو اور یہاں سے آگے پی ٹو سے آگے میرے پاس ایک اور پوائنٹ آیا وچ از ڈائریکٹلی ڈینسٹی ریچیبل آر ناؤ آر اینڈ کیو آر ڈائریکٹ ڈینسٹی ریچیبل بیکاز دے آر ان دا سیم ڈینس ریجن دے دیم سیلف آر ناٹ کور پوائنٹ بٹ دے آر ان دا سیم ڈینس ریجن جو آر ہے وہ پی ٹو سے ریچیبل ہے پی ٹو اینڈ پی ون اینڈ پی آر کور پوائنٹس اور وہ جو کیو تھا اس کا یہ میں پی تھری سے کر دیتا ٹھیک ہے وہ پی تھری سے ریچیبل تھا بٹ کیو 
and R are not core, but they lie in the same region, so they are densely reachable. Okay. So all density reachable point does form a cluster. So that is, uh, these are some definitions or algorithm itself is quite easy, but you need to understand these definitions to be able to uh, understand the working of the algorithm. Okay. So two sets of definition, core points, border points and outlier, and then the notion of reachability, directly density reachable, meaning that there is a path of core point that reaches from one point to the other where one point from where you start is a core point and the ending point may not be a core point. Okay? While in the case of density reachable, both of them are not core points, but they lie in the same dense region, meaning that they are reachable from the same path of core points. Okay? Any questions? All right. So what is the algorithm itself? So algorithm is uh, fairly easy. Uh, So basically you iterate over all points, okay? For each P in data set. Uh, so basically you need to determine whether it is core, border, or outlier, okay? And basically, uh, so that's essentially it. But uh, basically, isme kya hoga? Let's say you have a point randomly choose kiya P. How can you find whether it's a core point? You will have to find its neighbors or find all points in its neighborhood, which is defined by epsilon. So if it has more than n points in the neighborhood, it would be a core point. Okay. So if it does not have more than n point, it's a core point in its uh, in its in its neighborhood, then it's not a core point. Then you simply keep that as a potential border point or a potential outlier. आपने ये देखना है कि वो किसी और और point के border region में आ रहा है, तो इसका मतलब है वो border होगा. Let's say वो किसी भी region में नहीं आ रहा, तो इसका मतलब वो outlier है. ठीक है? So you identify core points. Core point jab set ho gaya, the well and good. Nahi hua to you, you have two options, border or outlier. And those would be fixed once you have scanned through the entire database. To wo kisi bhi region ke border uh, neighborhood mein nahi hai, to wo outlier ho jayega. Wo kisi ke border uh, neighborhood mein hai, to wo border point ho jayega. And then of course, once you have all of these points, then you collect all the density reachable points that would form a cluster. So in essence, uh, algorithm I have two lines, but in essence, what would happen is for each point, you will have to essentially look for all the points in his neighborhood. Unless you have some way of indexing your neighborhood, you will have to search for all other points in a data set. So in other words, order n square, aapko, computations can nahi padh jayenge for each point theek okay? hai so for each point aapne uh, for each point n hai you have to look at n others so each point one you have to look at n other of course you have to check for all n so this becomes n square theek okay? hai uh, if you have an efficient indexing distance based indexing of your data set then this may be reduced to maximum maybe n log n so if efficient indexing is done, 
basically this would be a distance based or similarity based indexing i don't know if you study these indexing techniques somewhere else for example the kd tree is a basically a distance based indexing technique uh, i don't know data structures mein shayad aap nahi padhte honge i'm pretty sure advanced data structures mein aata hai but sir we we are not going to cover the kd tree so uh, so if you don't have an indexing of course n square is key complexity here yeah, what's uh, complexity you have to look for all objects in the neighborhood of each object all right so what are some of the characteristics of this db scan algorithm which is density based uh the biggest advantage is that it can find arbitrary arbitrary shaped clusters theek hai wo kyun because density based or density regions pe connected hongi to wo aapki jahan bhi dense milta jayega aapka uh cluster grow hota jayega so for example aapke paas ye koi dense region u hai idhar यू करके सो वियर शेप करके बन सकता है कुछ यहाँ बन गया ठीक है कुछ इधर आ गया ठीक है सो इट्स नॉट नेसेसरी दैट यू हैव ओनली स्फेरिकल सर्कुलर क्लस्टर्स तो आपके पास आर्बिट्रे शेप क्लस्टर्स मिल सकते हैं यू कैन हैव समथिंग लाइक दिस एज वेल तो यू करके भी आ सकता है क्लस्टर ऑफकोर्स द शेप वुड समवर्ट बी डिक्टेटेड बाय द ई and and that you choose theek okay? hai so uh, if you if your eps and n assumes low density to fir aapke paas kind of uh, itne sharp clusters nahi milenge but if eps and n is high density then aapke paas uh, sharp clusters mil sakte hain aapko Yeah, so of course eps or n is user specified parameter and through these parameters you are controlling uh, the density of a region that you consider to be as uh, dense and you consider or you want it to be as part of a cluster so for for fixed n if you reduce eps then it means that you are increasing density and vice versa for fixed eps if you increase and then you increasing density so arbitrary tree arbitrary shaped clusters is a big advantage of db scan clustering algorithm all the previous algorithm that we saw were not able to find arbitrary shaped clusters they were only able to find more or less spherical shaped clusters theek hai so that's a big advantage some disadvantages are it's sensitive what are the parameters eps and n so by changing these parameters you might get totally different clusters and that is obvious because you are changing the density that you consider to be a cluster so it's quite sensitive to this and often times there are variations to the db scan algorithm by which you can change these parameters in a structured way and as such get meaningful clusters uh, at different density levels so वो एल्गुदम खैर हम डिस्कस नहीं करेंगे डिटेल में बट एल्गुदम्स दैट डू दैट ठीक है एल्गुदम कैन बी अप्लाइड टू बोथ न्यूमेरिक एज वेल एज कैटेगोरिकल डेटा सेट एज लॉन्ग एज यू हैव ए नोशन ऑफ सिमिलैरिटी ठीक है बिकॉज रिमेंबर वी डोंट नीड टू कंप्यूट डोंट नीड टू कंप्यूट द मीन 
all distances are computed from is an object. ठीक है सो ऑब्जेक्ट वाइज डिस्टेंसिस आपका कोई भी सिमिलैरिटी मेजर दे देगा कैटेगोरिकल बेस मेजर भी दे देगा मिक्स मेजर भी दे देगा न्यूमेरिक एट्रीब्यूट्स का मेजर्स भी दे देगा सो वी डोंट नीड टू कंप्यूट द मीन और राइट सो आई थिंक दैट इज असेंशियली इट फॉर डीबी स्कैन Any questions? No questions. All right. Uh, all right. So now let's uh, talk about graph-based clusters and clusterings. So density-based clusters are defined by the notion of density. Graph-based clusters are defined by some notion of graph uh, connectivity. So. So first of all, before going to that, let me start with uh, what is actually a graph. So graph basically is vertices and edges. Okay. So V is a set of vertices, which in our case is set of objects. Okay. मतलब जो हमारे डेटा सेट्स है ईच पॉइंट बिकम्स ए वर्टेक्स ईच पॉइंट बिकम्स ए नोड इन द ग्राफ ठीक है सो ई इज अ सेट ऑफ एजेस इन आवर केस इन आवर केस एन एज रिप्रेजेंट्स represents a similarity between the connected objects ठीक है edges are edges are made between two vertices and each vertex is an object so this object is x1 this object x2 if there is an edge between them it means that this edge represents some notion of similarity between these two uh, nodes so if it is a weighted graph then the weight of this edge would be the similarity okay so so if we so if you recall we discuss the similarity matrix before or dissimilarity matrix before so this basically is a n by n matrix where uh so let's say if this matrix is s ठीक है सो एस आई जे इज बेसिकली द सिमिलैरिटी बिटवीन ऑब्जेक्ट एक्स आई एंड ऑब्जेक्ट एक्स एक्स जे ठीक है सो ऑफ कोर्स इफ योर सिमिलैरिटी फंक्शन इज सिमेट्रिक व्हिच वुड बी द केस फॉर ए मेट्रिक this matrix s would also be symmetric uh, so similarity between xi and xj would be the same as the similarity between xj and xi so all these similarity values would lie in this n by n matrix so this n by n matrix then also becomes a weighted adjacency matrix 
or a graph matrix. So this is basically a weighted uh, adjacency matrix. Okay. So there will be a value between two uh, objects and that value will be presented by a line between those two objects and the weight of that line in the graph would be the similarity. Okay. So let's say you have object one hai. Let's say ye object one hai, or let's say ye object two hai. So the similarity would be the weight of this edge in the of these two graphs. So in ki darmiyan mein jo similarity hai, ye iska edge weight hai. And of course, if you have multiple objects, so you will have a connected graph. ठीक है? And so on. Now, uh, if you have an adjacency matrix for your uh, data set, you can always uh, apply graph partitioning algorithms. Okay. So, now you have similarity matrix. Tha, that similarity matrix is basically then the weighted adjacency matrix. Adjacency matrix is basically the representation of a graph right usme vertices bhi hain usme edges bhi hain usme weights bhi hain sab kuch isme aa gaya theek hai so once you have a graph uh, you can apply algorithms from graph theory like graph partitioning algorithms so what does a graph partitioning algorithm does so in the simplest case it will split the graph into two it will split the graph into two such that uh, the edges that it cuts to split the two graphs or to form two graphs has the least cost. Uh, similarity ki baat ho hai, uh, should mean it should have the maximum cost. Okay, so let's say, just a minute. Let's say, maybe a graph. Bana. Ye graph hai, aur se ye connect ke ye graph hai. If I cut here, I'll get two clusters. Or ye jo beach mein ek link cut hua hai, to iski jo cost hai, which is similarity. Uh, we would like to find that cut that has the least, uh, sorry, that has the maximum cost if you're using similarity. If you're using dissimilarity, that has the least cost. The sum of the similarities of the edges that are cut should be the highest. Similarity higher, okay. So similarity should be uh, minimum, right? So dissimilarity should be high. So, okay, sorry. So, so the sum of the similarity should be the minimum because so then there will be two separate graphs. Okay. Uh, so graph partitional algorithms exist that would do this for you. Okay. But the issue is that standard graph partitional algorithms are computationally very expensive. They scale with the number of nodes as well as the number of edges and the number of edges of course is n square. Okay. So usually in data mining we would not use uh, these uh, theoretical or you can say these graph Partitional algorithm. You try to use some sim simpler algorithms, uh, which, which you can we can say are based more on heuristic than graph theory. So we will discuss one such algorithm uh, starting in the next class. Running out of time today.
So, but uh, if your data set is small and if you, uh, you can go ahead and apply a graph partitioning algorithm to cluster your data set. So this would typically result in hierarchical clustering. Why? Because two clusters I and two clusters further cluster kia, further cluster kia and so on. So bisecting, just like bisecting K means that, so bisecting, you have clusters ka algorithm ban jayega, which will create a tree of clusterings. If you're using similarity, then the sum of the similarities that are cut to form those two graphs is the minimum. Okay, so I will stop here. Uh, any questions? Any questions? <laughs> so in the next lecture, uh, we will be discussing one uh, simpler algorithm for graph clustering, and then we'll start with uh, then we'll start with cluster evaluation.